my name is Lon Safko. Let's talk about time travel. We're always talking about it. There's a ton of stuff on YouTube. Everybody's freaking out. We think we're getting closer to time travel. That's the most ridiculous thing. Time travel is absolutely impossible. And I'm here to tell you why time travel is impossible. Let's say, for example, I was building a time machine and I built it in my garage. I have a really nice three car garage, plenty of room in a neighborhood called Tuscany Hills in California. And we're built, all the homes are built along the side of a mountain. So let's say that I build my apparatus and it's sitting solidly on my concrete floor of my garage and I perfect it and I go back only 20 years. Let's say 20 years, that's all. That's not a lot for a time machine. Okay, so the foundation that that time machine is sitting on, which is the poured concrete floor of my garage, 20 years ago actually was the side of a mountain. There was no neighborhood here as little as 20 years ago, and they were pretty steep mountains. So in order to create those properties, the building lots, they had to come in with big bulldozers, big caterpillars, and carve out the solid stone, the shale stone that uh, the mountains were made out of. And they would carve in the roads, and they would take all of the, the loose stone, and they would compact it and push it onto the low side of the hill. And, that's, and then they would flatten that out, and that's where the building lots were. So let's say I go back 20 years, and my machine stops thinking that I'm still on that concrete floor. Well, that floor didn't exist 20 years ago. Well, actually, even that building lot didn't exist 20 years ago. So in one scenario, if my built garage floor was towards the hillside, uh, the, the downhill side part of the lot, um, I could be looking at falling roughly 30 feet, crashing to the side of a, a mountain, and then rolling down 400, 500 feet down into the ravine below, uh, because that's where the base of my machine was just 20 years later. So now there's even, believe it or not, there's a worst case scenario. Let's suppose that my foundation of my garage was where the hill was, where they actually carved out all that solid stone to uh, build the roads and, and to flatten that building lot. Well, when my machine stopped 20 years later, or excuse me, 20 years ago, uh, I would be encased in solid rock 30 feet into the mountain. Uh, probably not a good place to be. So we're not talking about uh, temporal flux and, and creating Mr. Fusion like they did back to the future and finding enough banana peels to feed the Mr. Fusion uh, or uh, harnessing the power of a black hole because uh, that's the amount of energy that would be required to bend space to warp, bend space time to create a temporal flux. That's absolutely nonsense. Let's take an extreme example. Uh, let's say um, my uh, laboratory was uh, in the lodge at the top of the Grand Canyon. I'm at the Grand Canyon and my time machine takes off and I want to go back, let's say, I don't know, 65 million years ago because I want to see the, the last of the dinosaurs. I'm looking for what uh, caused the dinosaurs to go extinct. Okay, so I set it for 65 million years in the past, and I hop in my machine, and I get going, and bam, there I am. Yeah, there I am 65 million years ago, but the problem is, is that the Grand Canyon, uh, just outside of Flagstaff, right now is at about 7,000 feet in elevation. 65 million years ago, that was, uh, that land was actually an inland sea, that's where all of the layers <clears throat> the Grand Canyon came from being under the water, which meant that it was at sea level, at or below sea level. So when my time machine got to that period of space time, wow, that would have been a big problem because now I'm in a 7,000 foot free fall crashing down onto the ground below where it was 65 million years ago. And of course the reverse could be true. I could be 7,000 feet underground uh, if, if that process worked in reverse. Because remember, what we're talking about is X, Y, Z coordinates and time. So that means um, a certain amount north and south, and I got an exact coordinate east and west, and I have an exact coordinate up and down. And those change constantly. I mean, something as simple going back to the home, the house laboratory scenario, <clears throat> if I was in a forested area, wow, I could materialize 20 years ago and I would be embedded in a solid oak tree because there's a good chance that an oak tree and where I was sitting in my time machine existed at that very same instant in time and space, the same XYZ coordinates and the same coordinate of time. So that would also cause dire consequences for me 
and an oak tree to be fused together when my machine stopped. Well, then you also have the other problems. What about all the grass and brush beneath your feet? You have to exist in the exact same place and time, the same place and time. The grass and brush and rocks and trees occupy that space, that X, Y, Z coordinate at that exact time. So if I'm trying to do that, then we're embedded in one another. So that will never happen. What about the other problem? As I'm traveling, remember, I'm traveling. I'm not instantaneously appearing. That means I'm here now, and then I instantly appear 20 years ago. No, I'm traveling. I'm doing space travel. So what that means is, is that as they're building my neighborhood, there's bulldozers, big, solid caterpillar D9s pushing rock in the exact same spot, the same X, Y, Z and time coordinate, it, yeah, and while I'm traveling, it may only be a millisecond, but for that millisecond, I have to occupy the exact same time and space as a caterpillar bulldozer. How do you do that? How does the atoms and molecules of that bulldozer coexist, even for a millisecond, in the exact same place and time that I am as I'm traveling through? That would be the same thing as you traveling in a car, and then all of a sudden a bridge abutment be in front of your line of travel. You would hit it and again there'd be dire circumstances. So how does all that stuff, the the workers, the wood, the concrete, the the bulldozers, the contractors, uh, cars, you know, decade two decades of cars going in and out of that garage, all trying to occupy the same place and time. Even rain and snow and dust particles all have to occupy that same space. So come on, you know, you look on YouTube and yeah, you'll see some dude wearing cool glasses because he's a time traveler. Or you'll see somebody wearing a, a logo t-shirt. Yeah, he's a time traveler. Or I love the one where the woman is talking. It's, a, it's the uh, 1915 or something, Charlie Chaplin movie where the woman's talking on a cell phone. Man, I can't get self-service now. Could you imagine that woman trying to get self-service 75 years before the cell towers were actually even invented. So what do I think about that video? I think we have a higher probability that the woman is nuts and she's, and she's talking to her makeup case. So, yeah, sorry, time travel's never going to happen.